Hi Floss Tube, Olivia here, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. Today is Friday, July 12th. It is about 11 o'clock here in my neck of the woods. Uh, life for me has kind of returned to a sort of a normal pattern. Um, things have calmed way down, uh, but I will admit to missing my brother and his family um, because normally they come this time of the year and they just came earlier because Allison was graduating. So I'm used to having them here now. And um, I do miss my niece and nephew, uh, but I think that we are a fond memory because right after they got back from Las, or they got home to Las Vegas, they got a new puppy, at least I think it's a puppy. Um, and so they are in puppy heaven. Uh, they named her Bella, and I want to say that she, from her picture, looks like a cross between a Cocker Spaniel and a um, Border Collie, but she might not be. Um, she's totally cute. They are totally in love with her, and I hope that the transition to having a puppy is going well because I remember those days from when Molly was a puppy. Um, and I'm curious to to hear from my brother um, because so they live in Las Vegas and uh, not too long after they bought their house or sometime like after they bought their house they put in fake grass in the backyard and so that's what they have and so my brother always jokes I'm gonna go hose off my grass today and so I'm curious to see how it's going to be having a dog who we all know has to go out and use the bathroom. And so I'll be curious to see how that's all going um, because they have, I think, from what I remember, they have rocks that like line the, the border and then they have their fake grass and then the kids have a play structure. And so I'm just curious. And so I can't wait to ask him the next time I talk to him how the whole potty training thing is going on his fake grass. So that'll be, that'll be interesting. Um, but as I said earlier, the, um, my schedule has sort of returned to a more quieter, um, typical summer schedule. Um, I'm, you know, sewing for my Etsy shop or doing quilting for clients, cross stitching, I've started canning. Uh, I think it was uh, last Sunday I canned the first batch of blackberry jam and that went very well. I had um, Allison to help me and so that helped out a lot. And I think that uh, my cucumber pickles are, uh, when I looked the other day and then my husband, I don't know if he looked this morning or last night, but he was telling me that there's quite a few. And so I probably need to go take a peek and, and pick the ones that are ripe and sort of start collecting them because I think, you know, doing the pickles, I'm going to have to do them in small batches. So I think those are just about ready to be canned. And then the tomatoes, I, there's a lot of tomatoes. We planted 36 tomato plants and there are quite a few tomatoes they're nowhere near close but maybe with the weather being in the 80s and nicer this next week maybe they'll start to ripen up a little bit faster I don't normally start canning those until the beginning of August so we'll see we'll see how well they come along so a lot of canning in my future um, now before I go any further, in my last two videos I forgot to mention that I will be doing a Christmas in July giveaway in this video towards the end, so you just need to stay tuned for that. I also have the winner from my previous video. I did a, um, I had hit 2,500 subscribers and so I did a 2,500 subscriber giveaway, so I will have the winner at the end of this video right before I do the Christmas in July giveaway. Um, I have been enjoying seeing all of the uh, Christmas and July stitching and quilting that is uh, taking place. I am not participating. I was I was going to do um, on Facebook. There is a Little House Needleworks and Country Cottage Needleworks Facebook group, and I think they were doing a Christmas and July sal, but I decided to, you know, nah. I might at the end of the month post my uh, Glitter Village progress, but for the most part, that's the only thing Christmassy that I'm working on. 
but I've enjoyed seeing everybody's, um, I believe there's like a Jolly July going on, or, um, and I wanna say it's hosted by the Fat Quarter Shop, uh, and so I've been seeing a lot of cute little ornaments pop up, but uh, that's just not for me. Um, I love making ornaments, but I just can't exclusively work on 30 ornaments I just I can't do it maybe like one a week I probably could have done but I'm enjoying seeing what everybody is stitching on a lot of cute um, ornaments that are gonna be fully finished here over the fall so I can't wait to see what everybody does with all their cute little ornaments um, however I did decide on a sort of stitch rotation for myself um, I've been watching well I mean I've been of course watching a lot of floss too but I uh, kind of got to thinking about what I want to see happening in my stitching and for the most part I'm a monogamous stitcher and you know you're you're working on something and then you can feel like all of your whips mocking you from the box and so I got to thinking about that a little bit like what do I want to see happen and so I kind of decided on a new stitch rotation so I will talk about that as soon as I do my haul <laughs> because I shouldn't have even mentioned my stitch my stitching progress until after I talked about my haul. Um, okay, so past couple of weeks, I went a little crazy on my haul. And I think it just kind of happens like that sometimes. I, you know, I haven't really done much haul over the past, you know, handful of months. And, um, and so I started thinking about like my fall stitching and what I wanted to stitch on and you know you need some threads and so you start you know picking out your threads and the next thing you know you're picking out charts and so I I don't really want to say that I went overboard on my haul but I definitely need to do some sewing <laughs> to kind of counterbalance what it was I spent and I don't foresee myself doing a lot of haul in the next couple of months and I say that with my fingers crossed because you know all it takes is one little trip up to acorns and threads and I'm, I'm buying stuff so yeah anyway that being said um, I let me separate this a little bit okay hang on a second okay so um, as you know if you've been following along since probably about mid-March in my videos, you'll know that I have been collecting the Blackbird Designs Anniversary of the Heart series. And so I have the last two. So from Jen's Stitching Niche, I picked up number 11. And this one is called, does it say Evergreen Lane? It says right at the top, Evergreen Lane. And then Elizabeth Jane, which was number 12. And so now I have all of the charts and I've even decided I have a piece of 35 count sand and I think I'm going to stitch them all on that. I haven't quite decided if I'm going to do all of the called for, if I'm going to mix the called for with the DMC because I was looking at some of the charts and there was a couple of them where it just has two stitches and it has a whole um, fancy floss attached to it. And I thought, do I really want to go and you know, spend the money on a piece of fancy floss I'm gonna use for two stitches. So I do need to kind of decide. The good thing about Blackbird Designs is a lot of their charts, they use the same threads. And so even though, you know, I, I'll, you know, you know, be using like a specific color, I know that in another chart that I have of theirs, I'll probably use it again. So there is that factor to kind of consider. Also from Jen Stitching Niche, I got Jenny Bean and Friends. And I saw this one finished on um, Country Stitchers. I, I think it was Deb. She had it finished. And so she's completely responsible for this purchase because I fell in love with it. I don't know when I'm gonna stitch it, but I love it. And I, I kinda had my eye on this one for a little while and when I saw her finish, I had to get it. And I just happened to be, these two were sitting in my shopping cart when I was watching them, so it was really easy to put this one with it. And Jen sent um, this complimentary chart from Raise the Roof. And she also, which I don't know, let's see if you can see this, she sent this floss 
it's a special edition floss. It kind of looks like it, I want, when I saw it, it reminded me of mint chocolate. And so thank you so much, Jen. Can't wait to find something to use that in. And then in the same day, um, I was watching a Kindred Stitcher and she was talking about some of her Etsy purchases. And I thought, I haven't been on Etsy in a long time. Let me go see what's on Etsy. And so I ended up buying um, this Halloween Flip It. What's it called? I don't think it has a name. If it does, I don't know what it is, but it's just Halloween. I think it's just Halloween. Halloween Flip It. And this, so I picked up this uh, Prairie Schooler chart called Rain, Rain, Go Away. And when I saw it, I kind of laughed because my husband had, you know, been out here the last, you know, the few days leading up to me finding this chart. And he had been complaining about the rain. And, and so when I saw this prairie schooler, I thought of him and I thought it would be perfect to stitch it up and have it out because he's always complaining about it raining. And what was really neat is it came with a really sweet note from Lori. And thank you, Lori, so much for watching my videos. Your note totally made my day. I so appreciate it. And it was really sweet of you to include the note and tell me that you like my floss tube. So that was so nice. So thank you, Lori. I'm going to enjoy stitching Rain Rain Go Away. And then I went up to Acorns and Threads. Now, I went up, with, I went up to Acorns and Threads with the sole purpose only of getting thread for uh, two Halloween charts that I want to stitch in the next, well, over these next couple of months, as well as adding a few threads uh, that I was missing from Olga's stocking. And so the only thing I was going to buy was the chart I had ordered, which is Stacy Nash, Stacy Nash Primitives Houses of Berry Chapel Road, Mrs. Baxter's house. I ordered this the last time it was up there. It came in and um, they called when my brother and family and all the graduation stuff was happening. And so I didn't get a chance to get up there. And then they called to remind me that it was up there. And so we went up on Wednesday. And so I picked that up. So the only thing I had planned to pick up was the threads and this shirt. Famous last words. Because I came home with Halloween Town by Madame Chantilly. My husband saw this one and he really, really liked it. Um, they, I liked it stitched, they had a model and I liked the fabric that it was stitched on and so they ordered a piece of it for me. They said it will take a while and that's fine because I don't have any plans to stitch this this year so I can wait for it. And then I came home with this one, Pumpkin Brew. And I think the name of this is Frawny Ritter Designs. So I came home with that. And I came home with this one. This is A Year of Celebrations by Hands on Design. My husband saw the March one, the March and February one. Uh, the model stitched up and he really liked it. And so he encouraged me to buy this one. I, I've had my eye on this one for a while too. I even think it's in my one, two, three stitch wish, wish list. And then I came home with this one, which is being stitched up by Audrey, Stitchy Witch 42. And I saw, I was going through the Halloween charts that they had and I saw this and I thought it was very cute. I mean, I've been watching her progress and it's very cute. And when I saw it, I was like, cute, I have to have it. So it came home with me. And then, and then, last but not least is Cricut Collection Skeleton Crew. So they had this one stitched up and hanging. And my husband saw it first. He's like, hey, come over and look at this one. And so I saw it and it was love at first sight. And so I snagged it. You can stitch it all up in DMC. I am going to stitch it with this piece of um, Picture This Plus Heritage, Linen Heritage. And I think that's going to look really awesome behind the, the, ske the ship, Skeleton Crew ship. I think it's going to look awesome. And um, their model was, so the, um, the sun, or it's the sun, the moon, 
And these little fish down here were stitched with this glow-in-the-dark crinic uh, thread. And the skeletons were stitched with this color of crinic. And so I think that's going to look really awesome. Of course, I came home immediately and went to make sure that it was a glow in the dark. And it really glows in the dark. So I, uh, I really had to stop myself from starting it last night because I really, really want to start it. I think that's going to be fun. I don't think it's going to take me a long time to stitch up, but those are famous last words. But I am really looking forward to working on it and... Uh, I think it's gonna be great it's really really cute and the model I mean the model was fantastic I just I really really I'm really excited to stitch on it as you know if you followed me for any length of time that I love Halloween and I know it's not for everybody um, but you will start seeing Halloween kind of popping up in my stitching because it really is calling to me as well as fall is calling to me and it usually does this time of the year but I've been very Got to finish a couple of things before I start all the Halloween things. So, but I have a feeling that that's going to make an appearance very, very soon. Now, let's talk about finishes. Um, I, so, I know I showed it in my last video, and that was Summer ABCs by Little House Needlework. And if the bow falls off, it's not very well attached. It's only got the sticky dots the, that you use for um, scrapbooking. That's the only thing that's keeping the bow attached. So I need to kind of make it a little bit more, uh, maybe put like a magnet or something behind it just to keep it up there. But here is my finish. And so I attached it to the piece of wood that uh, winter and spring was attached to. It's the one that I painted green and then I antiqued. I of course backed it with gingham because I love gingham. And then the bow I just kind of fiddled with. It's two bows that I sort of squished together and attached with a Black Eyed Susan. And I think it turned out really, really great. I'm enjoying having it up. I originally had thought maybe to, you know, have the bow and then have like some uh, summery, uh, you know, you can get those picks at Hobby Lobby and I was going to take it off the pick and then have it hanging kind of like with winter where I had the two snowmen. But by the time I got to Hobby Lobby, all the summer stuff was gone and they had fall and Christmas out. So I missed out on next year. But I stitched this one on a 28 count summer khaki with all DMC threads. And I did a blog post where I have the color conversions that I used and I will make sure to link that down below. But I really like it. it. turned out fantastic. And I'm enjoying having it hanging up in my kitchen. So that is my one and only lone finish for the past couple of weeks. I also get a lot of questions about my tree. And so before I show you my progress, I will insert the video that I did showing the tree up close and I will put that video right here. So here is the patriotic tree that is up in the corner of my family room. It is all decorated with just kind of a variety of patriotic that I've kind of picked up over the last couple of years. I've only had a patriotic or a, a seasonal tree up for the past couple of years. Uh, the reason why I started doing it was because when Christmas was over um, and after having all of the glitz and the glamour of the Halloween tree, the autumn tree, and then the Christmas tree, I was kind of sad that this corner of the room would be, you know, dark and depressing in the winter months. So what I decided to do was make a seasonal tree or keep the seasonal tree up and just kind of decorate it for winter and spring and now it is decorated for patriotic it'll probably stay this way for another week and then it will be changed out to a sunflower harvesty tree keeping some of these um, decorations up and then just adding more maybe taking down the red flowers and the american flags uh, these particular little guys uh, were actually my grandma's 
and they hung on her Christmas tree. Um, you used to be able to buy kits from, I want to say Hirschner's, and then you can make these little sequined uh, different figurines, and I have a bunch of them. She gave me all of them, and so these guys I just pulled out of the Christmas and put it in with the patriotic stuff. So that is my tree, and uh, I had somebody ask about what was hanging up above it, and it is a witch. I did not do that on purpose. I accidentally left her up after I took down all of the Halloween decorations, and I decided to go ahead and just leave her up there because I knew where she was at, and then this year, hopefully I can remember to put her away with Halloween. My grandma got this for me um, in Sleepy Hollow when she was visiting probably about 10 years ago. And uh, she's one of my favorite little ornaments. Anyway, that is my patriotic tree. So I hope you like the close-up of the tree. Um, I enjoy having it in the corner of the room and uh, I, I always get, my, my little nephews are used to having it there, but my other nep niece and nephew, when they came to visit, they were like, why do you have a Christmas tree up? And so I had to explain to them what it was. I think they might've thought I was a little weird, but more and more I'm finding that people are adding seasonal trees to their decor. I mean, when you can find ornaments, you go into like Michael's or Hobby Lobby or Joann's, you can find ornaments, so people obviously, have trees uh, and so I've only um, had that tree up for maybe three or four years now and I really enjoy having it. Um, I have more of the Halloween, autumn, and Christmas decorations than I do any of the other holidays so occasionally like the tree in the living room it sits kind of naked for a couple of months uh, but I'll get there eventually. So. Let's go on to my progress. Um, so, the Sally Spencer, so um, Sally Spencer sampler, uh, Deborah Canopied Stitches and I are co-hosting a sal called BOF Sally Summer Stitching. It started July 1st. And uh, I'm really enjoying seeing all of the progress so far. There's some that have started it, some that are picking it up where they left off, and others who will be starting it a little bit later on. And that's totally fine. It's a forever kind of sell. Uh, when you do post a picture, don't forget to tag. If you're on Instagram, don't forget to tag both um, Deborah and myself in your picture so that we can see it. Or the hashtag. We'll be able to find it you, if you use the BOF. Um, Sally Summer Stitching tag or hashtag so but yeah really enjoying seeing everybody's progress so far and this is mine so one of the things that I decided to do in these last two weeks and I kind of briefly mentioned it earlier uh, was that I want to see so instead of just working exclusively on one piece like I normally do I wanted to start um, seeing progress on several things and so I decided to do kind of a stitch rotation and so on July 1st I started this one and then I started Harvest Chalk Full and so I rotated between Harvest Chalk Full and Sally Spencer until the weekend when I decided to stitch Glitter Village. And so that's what I've been doing the past two weeks is just kind of a rotation mostly between Sally Spencer and Harvest Chalk Full. And so I think this is five days of stitching total. And I had to spend a little bit of time today um, because this E right here is out of Gentle Arts Buttermilk. And you kind of, I mean, I can kind of see it, it's picking up in the camera. Um, and I thought, well, what if I do like a yellow? And so the eye, I stitched it up in a, I think it was like Ohio lemon pie and I couldn't see it at all, so I spent the morning ripping it out. So that is my progress. I'm enjoying stitching on it. And then I also started, which I think I, I don't remember if I showed this in my last video, but Harvest Chalk Full, I don't remember the exact day I started it. 
I remember the first time I posted on Instagram, I only had like the first three flowers done. So this one is by Hands On Design and uh, Priscilla. Priscilla Blaine, that's what her name is. Priscilla Blaine. I just, I wanna go to the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch. Uh, so um, I am stitching this with uh, DMC. I changed a couple of the DMC to a different color. Um, and I've got two yellows for the flowers. I think it'll be done in the next like two weeks. I don't really have too far to go because I'm down, I'm kind of down in this bottom part. And I think there's like two flowers and then this bottom part's left to go. Um, I purchased my pattern from uh, Down Sunshine Lane. I just did the pre-order the day that she announced it at, I think they were at the Midwest retreat, and they she showed that the patriotic one, which was so, I mean, I love the patriotic one. And then she showed this one and said that this one was gonna be the first one that would be available to everybody. And so I immediately went on Down Sunshine Lane and placed my pre-order. And then I think that she said it was gonna be shipping to shops and it came a few days later. And so I was really, really excited to get it because I decorate with sunflowers um, the latter half of July, all of August, and then part of September. I'm stitching on a piece of 32 count charcoal and in the beginning I will admit to having some bit of a, a headache and seeing the holes but now that I've you know went a ways it's not so bad and I enjoy it stitching it up on the charcoal. I wouldn't mind, you know, maybe down the road, because she said it was going to be released as a series, and so I wouldn't mind down the road getting something that's more of like a um, a gray, like a dark gray, and maybe like a white wash with it. I don't even know if they make such a thing. Um, I bought a big enough piece that I should be able to get two of them on here. So yeah, that's my progress so far. And so that also, well that has a little bit more than five days, because I think I had started it before my last video, I think. Um, but I have the the stand that um, they showed at the Midwest Cross Stitchers Retreat. I just happened to be going to Hobby Lobby that day, and I'm so glad that I did because they're gone. Um, but I was able to snag one, and so I've been patiently waiting to get my chart, get it finished, and get on there because I think it's gonna look awesome, and I can't wait. Um, then on Saturday and Sunday was a Glitter Village weekend. And so this is the number six, five. Number five Glitter House, it's the church. And here is my progress so far. I almost have it done. I just have to go and do the other side of the fence. And then there's two trees and then a few snowflakes and then it's done and then I'll be able to move on to number six. And so I will be working on this on Saturday and Sundays until I finish it because I would really like to have it up this year and especially with my vintage Christmas tree, I think it's gonna look really awesome because they, you know, it has the same colors that my vintage ornaments have in it, so. Yeah, I thought I made pretty good progress and I love the church. I mean, I love little white churches with stained glass windows. Those are some of my favorite buildings. And so this one doesn't disappoint. I really enjoyed stitching on it. Um, I was able to get quite a ways on this particular block because my, um, my two best quilting pals were coming over and they were just gonna do, uh, like my friend, uh, she was doing embroidery and my other friend, who was she doing? Oh, she was working on um, wool applique. So we were able to just sit down and stitch together. It was a lot of fun. I haven't seen them for a while. We're supposed to meet again next weekend. And so that will be, not this coming weekend, but the weekend after. So that'll be, it's always a good time when we're all together. So that is my progress. I'm stitching with all of the called for classic color works except for bamboo. And I'm using DMC 3865 in its place. And I'm stitching it on a piece of 32 count raw silver Belfast, which you can get from 123 Stitch. And I get a lot of questions asking what size of piece am I stitching it on, and this is a 16 by 16. 
And when I get it done, it's going to hang right there during the holiday, Christmas holiday season. And let's see, where does that leave us? So I'm going to do a quick little shop update. Um, and then I will show you a quilt. So um, like I said, I've been doing quite a bit of sewing the past two weeks because everything has kind of returned to a, um, like a regular summertime schedule. And so I have not necessarily restocked the shop, but I've been working on stocking the shop. And so the first bag that I got is this one. And so some of these uh, do not have my grandma's lace on it because I only have off-white lace left. I've used the majority of the white vintage, the white lace that was my grandma's, I've used the majority of it and so I had to go to Hobby Lobby and pick up some um, new lace and so this is one of the new laces. So unfortunately it's not my grandma's lace but I tried to keep it a little bit of a vintagey look. And then there's this one. Wow, I hope that's not gonna the lighting is really weird right now, so everything's kind of washing out. I noticed that my face was washing out a little bit. And then this Halloween one, which I love. There's the back, I love it. And this Christmas, vintage Christmas. And this one has my grandma's lace. And that one. Sewing notions. Some lemons summer and you know pumpkins are starting to make an appearance in the craft shop so here is some pumpkins a little travel one it is city of London this is my grandma's vintage lace and this is a fox and a bear it's kind of like woodland creatures Chickens, this is my grandma's vintage lace. And this also has my grandma's vintage lace. Just kind of a modern take on birds on a wire maybe. And this, and this is my grandma's vintage lace. And these are all like little fishes. One of them has lipstick on it. So those are all available in my shop as of right now and then I do have new cut that just has to be assembled so I will be working on that this afternoon. And before we get to the giveaway, I'm going to show you the quilt that I have hanging out in the living room. So I will insert that video right here. So we are out in my living room and the main quilt that hangs up out here is Farm Fresh Produce by Crab Apple Hill Studios. I stitched this quilt, I want to say five or six years ago. It could have even been longer. Uh, it is, so the thing with this quilt was you, um, you traced it, then you colored it with color crayon, and you heat set it, and then I stitched mine with DMC threads, but I'm pretty positive that the called for threads were Cosmo because that was about the time that the designer uh, changed over to using Cosmo threads from DMC. I also remember stitching this while watching the first season of Downton Abbey before it was popular on OPB. Uh, this one is personalized. I always tried to, when I was doing hand embroidered quilts, I always tried to personalize them with uh, members of my family. So this little blue truck is personalized with Ethan's name and then the art sign or the little sign out front of the the barn is personalized with my daughter Allison's name. It was a lot of fun to stitch. I just quilted it with very simple flowers and just sort of a Oh, a meandering and scroll just kind of you know here and there a little bit of this a little bit of that because my goal was to allow the the blocks that I stitched to stand out and not the quilting 
but it was a lot of fun. And this is the display that is currently on it. I'll probably change this up a little bit when I uh, bring out like the sunflowers. I don't really have a lot of sunflowery decorations yet. Most of this will probably stay, just a few things will probably get put away. And then over here is my patriotic tree that is out in this room. It's a, it's a smaller tree than the one that is out in the family room. And then the banner that I made a couple of years back using burlap. Uh, we painted it with uh, craft paint and then just kind of uh, strung them all together. And then there is my Hello Summer with a couple of chickens. So yeah, a lot of the stuff's gonna get changed out next week, except for the quilt. So I hope you enjoyed the the quilt that is hanging out in my living room as well as my little display and the second Christmas tree that uh, sits out there. A lot of the time that tree is naked because I don't have a lot of, I've only started keeping a, a seasonal tree up and it started with this one and then that one I ended up getting like during a Black Friday sale and it was super cheap and I couldn't leave it behind. And so the one out there, it does stay naked part of the year, um, but I'm working on, you know, making ornaments or collecting them or, you know, sometimes for like, uh, like Mother's Day, my kids gave me a couple of uh, ornaments that are on this tree and I got them for Christmas tree. I, I, the kids always collect ornaments for me for like my birthday or Christmas and, you know, because they know that I keep the tree. Um, anyway, so. Let's do the giveaways. So in my last video, I had a 2,500 subscriber giveaway. And the question that I asked was your favorite thing to take to a barbecue or a picnic? So many fantastic uh, answers. I was very hungry reading through everyone's responses. And I was thinking, man, if we took all of our recipes and compiled them into a cookbook, it would be one fantastic cookbook. Uh, there was a lot of like salads I can remember um, from when I was a kid. Um, cause we, I feel like when I was a kid, we used to do a lot more family reunions and get togethers and we don't anymore. And I can remember a lot of the, um, salads that were mentioned in comments. Um, but thank you to everybody who, um, left a comment, who liked my last video. I appreciate it. Um, but the winner is Sherry DeYoung. So Sherry, get a hold of me. Um, you can either get a hold of me on Instagram at Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. You can send me a, a, a direct message, or you can email me at Pumpkin Hollow Quilting, uh, Pumpkin Hollow Quilting at gmail.com, and send me your address, and I will get this in the mail to you next week. So congratulations, Sherry! Thank you so much for playing, and for being a subscriber. I appreciate you. And so now, Christmas in July. So if you've been following me, you know that I did a Halloween in May, a Thanksgiving in June, and now a Christmas in July. So what you will win, project bag, made by me using my grandma's vintage lace. This is the vintage Christmas project bag. And when I saw this fabric, I knew it was perfect for the chart, which will accompany the bag. So it is Prairie Schooler Santa's house. Um, I stitched uh, this up last fall and I absolutely loved it. I loved it so much that I had to go track the pattern down again and snag it so that I could give it away because I knew this was the perfect one to give away for a Christmas in July giveaway. So what you have to do. So first of all, you have to answer the question, which is, and the question is brought to you by my husband who thought it up. Um, if Santa won the lottery and you could have anything on your wish list, so if he comes to you and he says, I won the lottery and I want to give you your dream gift, the thing you've most wanted your whole entire life or your whole adult life or that's on your wish list, what would it be? If he asked me, I would say I want a legit dream, I want my sewing room like my my dream like a legitimate dream sewing room <laughs> instead of just having it on pinterest and looking at it at every once in a while um 
Most of you guys don't know this, but in the garage I have my long arm quilting machine and it's a garage that I've kind of, I mean, I, I can't even say that I've turned it into a craft room because at the end of the day, it's still a garage. It has the two garage doors. It's got my son's basketball hoop in there. There's storage out there. So all the Christmas and the Halloween and all the holiday stuff's out there. I have my, my um, quilting machine out there. I have two cutting counters out there. One that I do for uh, like the finishing and the crafts and things I get wild ideas for. It's also where I do the packaging for my Etsy shop. And then the other cutting table right now is just to hold things because the light above it got taken down. And I would want it to actually be like a dream sewing room, you know, where it's got like my quilt machine and it's got lighting and it's got electrical outlets instead of the one that's clear across the other side of the room. You know, it's got cutting tables, bright lights, cute lamps, cute chairs, stitching sections, you know, just the whole nine yards. That's what I would tell him. He would probably go, mm, no, that's too much. But that is what he said. I would say, I want my dream sewing room. Um, so the sky's the limit. Be creative in your answers. It can be as small as I want that primitive needle chart that's $8 million on eBay. Or, you know, maybe you want a Ferrari. Go crazy. Tell me what you want in the comments below. You must be a subscriber like the video and in my next video in two weeks i will announce the winner so that way you'll have plenty of time to stitch up the prairie schooler santa's house i can't tell you how much i love stitching this one and i finished it in a christmas wreath i think i showed it in my first video i'll try to get it out and so i can show you what i did anyway so i think that just about wraps it up for this update um I will continue adding project, jo project jobs, project bags to the shop over the next couple of weeks. So, you know, if you're in the market, check it out. I will put a link below to my shop. I'll also put a link below to my blog. Um, follow me on Instagram, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. If you are uh, an Instagram lover like myself, um, I also have a Facebook page, Pumpkin Hollow Quilting. Find me on there. And I guess. I will go now. So I hope you have a great couple of weeks that you get a lot of stitching done. If you're going to be canning, happy canning. Um, yeah, stay cool. I think it's going to be a hot one everywhere, except maybe here. It's supposed to be hot here too. Um, anyway, so I will see you guys in a couple of weeks. Happy stitching and happy Christmas in July. Bye guys.